Hello and welcome to Deep Dive, the podcast that delves into the minds of entrepreneurs, creators, and other inspiring people to uncover their journeys towards finding joy and fulfillment at work and in life. My name is Ali, and in each episode, I chat to my guests about the philosophies, strategies, and tools that have helped them along the path to living a life of happiness and meaning. My guest this week is Shazad Yunus, founder and CEO of Muzmatch. If you haven't already heard of Muzmatch from their entertaining underground campaigns, it's the revolutionary dating app that's transforming the way Muslims find love and marriage. I thought about this and I was, as a man, and I thought, why are Muslim men generally quite useless at all this? Mm. I'm being... I'm speaking very generally to cover course, all the, yeah. the politically correct community out there, but I'm very politically incorrect at times. In our conversation, Shazad shares with me how he quit his job and built the Muzmatch app from the ground up, what it takes to find the perfect match, and the problem with dating app etiquette for Muslims. All right, welcome to the show. Why, thank Thanks. you. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I have a question. Uh-oh. Why are you banned from Hinge? <laughs> How does, how does that work? You know what? I think it's because I was overtly doing research on... Because I do research on all these platforms. Okay. I see what they're all up to, etc., etc. So you've got accounts on multiple dating apps? On many, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And most of them just don't have... They just have gibberish on the account. Okay. Uh, actually, nearly all of them do. Um, uh, and I think this one did. I actually had memes. I had four memes as my as my pictures on it. Okay. But I think... I can't remember if, if Hinge has a, has a selfie feature or not. I can't remember. Anyway, yeah. somebody obviously blocked me. I, I emailed them saying... I was just testing it out. I had yeah. memes. I clearly had memes on the account. And they just said, no, thanks. So they... Uh, so do you think they blocked you for the memes or they, they blocked you because they Googled your name I and probably, realized... I would, I would go with the second one. I think okay. they, they kind of knew who I was and thought, oh, oh hold up. No, thank you. Bye. So, like, so it's how, interesting. How, how, many, how many dating apps are there? Oh, there's too many. <laughs> <laughs> there's too many. Um, you know, I'd say there's probably, I don't know, eight big ones. I mean, you've got, you got the mainstream yeah. ones and we're in the, in the more niche market. But okay. uh, I just think if you're in this space, you need to know what everyone's up to um, because each app will tackle something in a different way. Okay. Um, and it's always it's just interesting. You know, everyone's kind of learning from each other okay. and just scoping the space out. So what what would prompt you to decide, you know what, I want to make, I want to build a company. Let me build a, an app that caters to the Muslim marriage market. Like, what was the story you, there? You know, I'll tell you. You know yeah. what, and it's one of those things when you look back, it's just many kind of accidents. Uh, so, you know, to, to give you background, people don't realize Muzzmatch is 10 years old. We actually celebrated our 10, call it 10 year anniversary a couple of weeks ago. It actually started off just as a random side project. So I was, you know, for those who know, don't know, whatever, uh, I was an investment banker, one of those, um, for about nine years. And I think it was 2011, just me and my team were just, you know, my team were just giving me grief about being single. Yeah. And obviously I'm a Muslim guy, I'm a good Muslim boy. And, you know, which they found <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Um, uh, and I remember they were, you know, we were just cracking jokes and, you know, we were like different platforms for different religions and Muzmatch was the Muslim one. And I remember just thinking that name is, that name is really good. So I bought the domain and then just randomly. Oh wait, so you just randomly decided to come up with yeah, 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 the phrase yeah. Muzmatch. So, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so, so yeah, exactly, uh, literally, okay, right? Yeah. So uh, people think it was a deep story, yeah. but it literally was Vance to start off with. Yeah. And, um, uh, and then I remember thinking, um, you know, all my friends were all professional Muslims in, in, in London. And I remember just... <laughs> professional were, Muslims. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Making money from being Muslims. <laughs> you, you know how it is, right? <laughs> yeah. And they were all like, um, it's really hard to find someone, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I just remember, you know, I'm, I've always loved technology and, and, and IT and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I remember thinking what's out there was really terrible. You know, like the websites were pretty crap. Um, you know, a lot of the Muslim ones were... We were still asking things like, what's your body shape and how much you earn? You know, that's, that's where we were at. And I thought, this is terrible. Mm. I can do better than this. So literally side project, I just set up what was a Muzzmatch website. Just had it ticking along. I think it had a couple of thousand people uh, who used it. We actually had a few, a few weddings, but nothing crazy. And then it got to like 2013, 2014. So after the financial crisis, um, and just as the App Store was really kind of taking off, right? Uh, um, and I remember thinking, hold up, this should be an app. This shouldn't be a website um, because, it, and then I remember checking Google Analytics and seeing, um, you know, eight percent of our traffic was coming from mobile, and, and it just makes sense. If I'm messaging someone, that's quite a personal thing. I'm not going to go onto my laptop, log in, and then, hey, how are you doing? You yeah. know, and then turn the laptop off. It's, it's got to got to be on my phone. Um, so for me, it's just a no-brainer, and it's one of those things. Once it was in my head, I couldn't get it out, and I thought this has to be an app, um, and I was convinced that somebody else was about to do it, um, and it was really eating away at me. And it's, so it got to about 2014, and I thought, screw this, I need to do it. So um, I quit my job. Uh, everyone thought I was mad. My parents thought, what the hell, this, this guy's having a quarter life crisis here. <laughs> I think I was. Um, but I quit my job and I sat there at home and thought, how do I build apps? Um, um, and in six months, I don't know how I did it. Uh, I built Muzmatch, which was, you know, in native Android, native iOS mm. in six months and the back end and everything. It was literally just me in my bedroom coding away. And it's the only app I've ever built. And thank God it was successful. 
<laughs> you know, it's quite a gamble. Uh, but yeah, and then it kind of, it's one of those things once you, for me, I quit my job so there was no backup plan as such. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I, I saved up to quit. You know, I always knew that I didn't want a whole career in banking. It didn't mm. really interest me. For me, I, I just, I always knew I had to have my own business. Um, and it's kind of, like I said, it was, it, if I look back, it was many accidents. You know, it was, it was just us having bants about what, what, how on earth Shaz is ever going to get married to, you know, the, the name was matched to me just setting up the website because I thought what was out there was terrible to obviously, you know, apps really taking off and then me just thinking, hold up, this should just be an app. And then to me, quit my job and then just going wow. for it. Okay. You know? So quite so a journey. So it sounds like the, the idea came from trying to solve a problem and just, yeah, no and, doubt. And recognizing the problem of getting married as a Muslim is quite hard. Yes. Uh, and you in particular were having that problem. So no in, doubt. A, in a way you were, you were scratching your own itch. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I and guess, I, you know what yeah. it was? I understood the problem. Yeah. So, you know, because I, I mean, if I look at it now and I think who could do, a, you know, not in an arrogant way, but, you know, maybe you have to believe it. Who can do a better job than mm. us? And I'm like, I don't think anyone can because I understand the problem. I understand the market. I understand tech. I understand business. And hopefully I'm, I've done a half decent job of getting a team together. And all of those things, I think, you know, undoubtedly are your edge, right? It's what you bring to the table that somebody mm. else couldn't do or didn't do beforehand. So that's the way I kind of look at it and think about it. Um, which hopefully gets us to where we've got to. Interesting. So if I can, if I can take you back to that time, because like a lot of people who, who are kind of listening or watching to this might be thinking, okay, well, A, the, there's sort of two places where I find that beginners stumble. Number one is I don't know what idea to go for. Mm. And number two is once I have an idea, I don't know how to execute on the idea. Yep. And it sounds like you had the idea of solving a problem that you had personally. Do you have any other thoughts on this whole thing of like, how do you come up with an idea? You know, that's a hard one. I think... You know what? The big problem we have now is we're so busy. You know, I was talking about this on a on a podcast yesterday. Um, you know, and now more than ever, our free time is like under assault, right? Every ounce of free time that we have, um, we've got so many reasons to waste it. Netflix, watching stuff, uh, uh, watching TV. There's, there's so much media and stuff to consume that our free time is busy doing stuff, um, and we don't intentionally just take the time to think about stuff and think about ideas right like with a piece of paper in your room or whatever outside um, um and actually thinking about an idea like consciously obviously some sometimes ideas come randomly right you're you're going for a walk you're in the shower whatever and sometimes they are the best ideas uh, but we very rarely actually just sit down and concentrate and think of you know what i'm gonna find i'm gonna think about five problems that i have and people have asked me this before and i always say think just like rather than just thinking generically focus on your own life and because that's the stuff that you'll relate to and understand hopefully better than anyone else. Mm. So think about problems that you personally face, whether it's through work, whether it's in a personal situation, whatever, um, that you, whether you have the answer or not, just identify a problem. And then once you've, let's say you've found five problems, um, I, I'm gonna make this up. Imagine you uh, really like uh, non-pasteurized milk. A really random idea, <laughs> this is super random. But imagine you like pasteurized milk. I hate all the milk that, that gets sent, but I'm not one of these oat person. I'm not gonna do this oat milk stuff, but I really like milk and I don't like what's out there, right? That's a problem. And maybe you maybe you have some weird interest in milk, right? <laughs> this is the most <laughs> random one, random one ever, but fine, right, that's the problem. Then the next thing I would be looking at is, okay, um, uh, what's the alternative to what's out there? What kind of, uh, let's say we, we maintain it has to be dairy. What dairy alternative, I'm offending all the vegan people who are watching this part. But let's say, what's all the dairy alternatives? And then, you know, obviously there'll be some non-pasteurized version. All right, who supplies non-pasteurized uh, milk right now? Is there any mechanism for getting that right now? Probably not, maybe in London, uh, maybe not. Um, do I think there's enough people who want it? And actually there's a load of, I remember watching some stuff about this. There's a lot of people who are convinced of the natural effects of what's in non-pasteurized milk, right? Straight from the udder, yeah. almost, right? <laughs> and, they, and they feed it to the kids and stuff because they say there's all this good stuff that, that comes yeah. out of it. I know some, uh, whatever, health stuff anyway, right? But just going down that whole road of exploring all of that, and maybe you've come across something where you find out, actually, there's a lot of people who are really interested in this. And the big problem is there's no real good supply and no one's really nailed strong branding around non-pasteurized milk. Mm. And maybe your brand is straight from the udder, right? <laughs> <laughs> Utterly ridiculous, right? So something like that. Yeah. I just feel like, um, you know, and, and this is a, t it's a terrible example, but it's just more that journey of something that I'm really interested in, yeah. something that maybe I'm passionate about, milk, uh, um, um, and something that you think that no one is solving quite right um, uh, in the way that you would solve it right now. Okay. And then how you explore all that. And I guess crucially, it's that's not to say no one is doing it at all. Yeah, no, no, no. Because no, no, everyone is doing all. everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like people always think, oh, someone's doing it, what's the point? Yeah. But you know what, um, there's so, I, I think most businesses, 
undoubtedly are iterations on on others. Mm. The the truly you know, landmark companies that take over the world are the ones that really break out and invent something completely new that didn't mm. exist. But within reason, if you actually dissect it, it's an iteration on. It really mm. is. And it's just a massive iteration, yeah. right? Rather than something incremental, it's this massive gap. And then, oh my God, where did this come from? Um, so I do think within reason, everything's new, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, what you're trying to find or trying to identify is um, your con- what your contribution is that you think will make this thing successful. Okay. You know? So let's say someone's got an idea. They think, okay, I've, I've got this problem. I, w- I love, freaking love pasteurized, unpasteurized <laughs> yeah, milk. Yeah. And there's no easy way of getting it. Um, at that point, it's like, okay, so this is a problem. Mm. And it sounds like for you, the, the, idea, the idea for Mismatch, you, you then were able to execute on it by, all right, then I'll just build a website as a side project. But you're an investment banker. It's like it's an unusual skill set for mm. an investment banker to be able to just build a website. Like yeah. how how did that happen? It's good, yeah, good question. And people have asked me this as well. Uh, so I there's kind of a few principles that I had in my mind at the time. Number one was, uh, and it's weird because when I was building it, I mm. never built it with the intent that this would be a big company and that would have a massive team. You're yeah. never thinking like that. You, yeah. you have this weird you have this weird feeling in your head that obviously whatever you're working on, you want it to be successful, but you actually don't know what that means. I didn't know what that means. I had no feeling of what success meant and if i look back success after one year is to me looks very different to success after five years six years or whatever mm-hmm. we've been doing it so um um i would say for me i always knew that if i was ultimately going to run a tech company i had to be a techie i had to be an engineering guy i had to be able to do all this stuff okay, because I, I felt it would make me a better ceo or so you're founder. an investment banker like where did the idea of being a techie come so from? i i've always loved tech i mean okay. my degree way back when was computer science oh. but then my so which was i guess was the okay. seed right yeah. um so i was never scared of coding but that okay. said for nine years i didn't really code yeah um, i had a few side projects i actually had a really interesting project me and a friend um we set it up it was called unicity and yeah. this was early this is very early Facebook, and you know, not that everyone says oh, I've invented Facebook before yeah. it came out, but <laughs> effectively what it was, it was an academic social network. Yeah. Um, and we actually built it, and it was kind of interesting as an exercise, because we built mm. it, but then we just didn't stick with it, okay. and it kind of just fell apart. Oh. You know, we, the, the execution in terms of the marketing and getting it in people's hands and actually testing it and all that, we just never did, and it just died as a, as a project. Um, uh, but whereas, you know, so let's say, for me, I always love tech, I always love coding, but I never really did it for nine years. But then when I started this, I thought I have to, I had this thing in my head of what it was going to be, and I actually designed it. It's funny. I designed the first version of Muzzmatch in Microsoft Word. I know. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Incredible. <laughs> you know the, the ability to create squares and stuff? It yeah. was all in Word. It was okay. horrible. But that's, you know, I wasn't a designer as such, but yeah. I designed it in Word. And then, um, and then I just learned how to build apps. Literally. So my first, the first app was the iOS one. Mm. Um, and I, I learned by doing. And you just Googled have. like how to build an app. And yeah, like, yeah. Right, and and I actually out. started with the hardest thing first, I remember. So I started with how do I, um, and it was properly hard actually, how do I build a, a chat messaging, a, 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 basically a chat, basic chat app. Mm. How do I build an app where two people can chat real time? And it was going down a bunch of libraries and software. And you know, we use basically the heart of what WhatsApp is built on. So some software called eJabbard, um, uh, uh, which is an XMPP, which is the protocol that WhatsApp use. So that was basically what I used because there were tutorials way back when of how you can kind of do all this. And that was painful doing it. But then I built that and then built everything else around that. Um, so I went to the heart of what the app was, which was chatting and mm-hmm. then everything else. Um, uh, and like I said, I learned by doing. I didn't really. So I remember doing one uh, basic tutorial of Xcode, which is the software on iOS to build apps. I did that one uh, tutorial of how Xcode works and how you do all, you know, how to understand the whole view controller model and all that stuff. And once I learned it, I just got stuck on. Uh, and, and that was the way I did it. Um, and it was weird. It was. It took me about four months to build the iOS app, the Apple app, uh, which was horrible because it was, for those who know, it's in Objective-C, which is a disgusting language. <laughs> it really is. Uh, now it's Swift, which is a way more friendly, but back then Swift was new. Um, it was Objective-C, hated it, nearly gave up because I was getting really stuck on quite a few things. Doing push notifications on iOS, uh, my, mm. my God, it, you'll lose. <laughs> You'll lose a limb doing it, but it was horrible. Anyway, so I uh, did that. And it took me about four months to do the iOS app and about one month to do the Android one. So I guess the benefit was the back end was done, the yeah. endpoints were done, and Android weirdly just seemed to make a lot more sense in terms of, I actually found Android as as difficult as it, as it is because you've got all these devices. Yeah. I actually think they've solved it in a really good way um, for how Android works, not to get too technical mm. in it. But, but anyway, so that took a month. And then, um, yeah, I guess from start to end, it was October, I sat down at my computer and said, right, how on earth do I build apps? And it was 
April when we actually I think it was end of March from memory yeah. or something like that when we released uh, the iOS app. And do you think your computer science background particularly helped in the making of the app? Or do you think any old person doing a medicine degree no, could so just sit down my, and learn? So my yeah. thinking is, uh, I mean, I'm sure it would have helped because maybe I wasn't scared of code. Yeah. Um, and maybe I, oh, no doubt, I understood the basic mechanics of coding, object-oriented languages, all that kind of stuff. However, I'm a big, I'm a, I've, and I've always said this, we're at an age now where knowledge is free and it's everywhere, hmm. right? Like you can learn anything on YouTube right, or on, on the internet. Everything's free which is amazing, it like, genuinely is. Uh, and I, I, I genuinely think anyone can do anything. Obviously, different people are better at some stuff naturally, but uh, I genuinely think you put your mind to it and you put the effort in, you can learn it just as good as the next guy, you nice. know? And, and there's so many like code, coding academies where you got, we actually hired a guy who was a plasterer and he learned how, he learned himself, how, he was a junior guy who, when he joined us. Um, um, he did a course, I think, um, in how to build Android apps. And he just wanted to learn how to do apps because obviously better income and better lifestyle for him and his family. Um, and he started learning it and, you know, he grew really well, you know, and it was great just seeing someone from a completely different background end upon this road. So uh, I, I do think anyone can do it. I think the decision you need to make as an individual is um, an honest decision of where is my time best spent? You mm. know, is my time genuinely best spent coding this thing or... Am I stronger with another guy who can, or girl, who can code this stuff? Mm. Um, um, if I if I look back, I do see a benefit of two really strong different minds early on. I do think I, I do think you can be stronger. You can, I think you can make a lot more progress in a in a shorter uh, mm. uh, space of time, uh, which is a good thing. Um, I think for me, I had this very clear idea of what Muzmat should be. I was very determined to be the first app out there, um, and that was my kind of. Uh, and plus I had no money coming in, yeah. which is always a great driver. Uh, so I literally were just focused on, I want to build this and I think I can do it. And I just did it. Okay. Um, uh, the kind of good thing, about, if I look at the flip side as well now, you know, in those early days, obviously I built the app, designed it. I did the back end. I did the website. I did the customer support. I was approving profiles to the point where the customer support and approval profiles were like four hours of my day every day. And I was like, this is killing me. I, I need to hire someone to do this. Yeah. Um, so that's why relatively we were late in, in hiring as such. But... The beauty is now, everyone I talk to in the company, be it in marketing, be it in, in, in the community management team, be it on the engineering, I, I genuinely can help everyone out. And I have a good insight. I, I'm, not, I'm not at that point where I have no idea what they're talking about. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever, you go and do that because I, mm. I don't know what you're talking about. Not at all. Like everywhere I'm able to contribute. Yeah. Uh, uh, and hopefully, I hope, guide the company in a better, in a better direction. We're going to take a very quick break to introduce our sponsor for this episode, and that is Brilliant. I've been using Brilliant for the last two plus years. They're a fantastic platform for learning maths, science, and computer science with engaging and interactive online courses. And the great thing about Brilliant is that they really teach stuff from a very first principles-based approach. It's almost like the way that we were taught in places like Oxford and Cambridge, where you learn a concept and then you apply the concept to an interesting problem, rather than just being spoon-fed stuff like we initially learned in school. My favorite courses on Brilliant are the computer science ones, uh, as some of you guys might know I was torn between applying to medicine and computer science. I went for medicine in the end, but I always had an affinity to computer science and taking the courses on Brilliant, like their introduction to algorithms and their introduction to Python, really helped me get more of a grasp of computer science than I've ever had before. It's also great for learning how to code, which is an incredibly useful skill to have, especially if you want to start a business. And I attribute like 98% of my business success to the fact that I learned how to code when I was in secondary school. So if you want to check out the courses on math, science and computer science, then head over to brilliant.org forward slash deep dive and the first 200 people to sign up with that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring this episode. Um, so, I mean, ar around this whole everyone, anyone can learn to code thing, mm. I, it often seems just like too good to be true, right? Like, it's, it's, it sounds like what a lot of people say, and I, and I would broadly agree with this, is that basically anyone could just go on the internet, learn how to code, and within a few months to a year, yep become like a proficient enough software engineer to get a ridiculously high paying job at a tech company. Do you think that's like reasonable? I'm genuinely convinced. Yeah. Okay. I'm convinced. Because if you look at it, I mean, look, even in tech, there's so many new languages, uh, new frameworks coming out. Everyone's having to relearn stuff, right? Um, obviously, some people are better than others, no doubt. But I think for the most part, at most tech companies, you, anyone can learn the skills to do it. I'm, I'm convinced. Um, and it's one of those roles, I think, where with experience, with practice, and with just forcing yourself to do it every day and mm. to push yourself uh, in terms of coding or building something or building something more adventurous, mm. uh, um, 
you can get to that kind of stage. I'm convinced. And I think the problem is, is people, so if I speak to, you know, if I recall all the conversations I've had with people who are like, oh, I'm not a coder, I can't code. And I'll, have you tried? No. Yeah. Well, like, how do you know you don't can't code? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Until you try and literally struggle and net, like, and genuinely struggle and think, you know what, this is impossible. My brain just literally is not wired this way. Until you've gone through that process, I, I just think it's, it's fluff. You know, you're, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes. Um, um, and I think you have to, with anything, you have to force yourself to be uncomfortable. I remember when I was doing the iOS app, and, it, and this was three months in, and I remember there was, there was, <laughs> one was push notifications that nearly killed mm. me, and another one was a memory leak. It would be, you would swipe about five times, and then the app would crash, and, and I didn't know why. And I spent two weeks just trying to solve this, and two weeks on one single problem that's preventing you making any progress is a killer. And I was very, cl I remember very close, uh, I was very close to just giving up, saying, oh, this is too hard, like I'm not the guy for this. Um, Objective-C as a language is, if anyone, it is a horrible language. Whereas now, what's great is languages have modernized. You know, Swift, Java, you know, Java is now caught in whatever in, in Android. Um, these languages are way more programmer friendly. So th that even helps you on that perspective. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I think until you've done it and forced yourself to be so uncomfortable, um, don't assume you can't do it. Okay. How did you keep it fun for yourself in those sort of five months while you, you've quit the job at an investment banker, you've lost your huge salary, you're like, right, I'm going to grind on this app. <laughs> I'm not grinding on the app. <laughs> <laughs> um, good question. How, you know what? It's Part of it genuinely is you've committed. Hmm. So when you quit your job and you tell everyone I'm going to fill this app and everyone thinks you're an idiot, if you quit four months in, I feel like you will be the idiot. Um, I didn't want to quit. I'm not a quitter, number one. I think number two, I... There was enough in me to think there was something here that could yeah. that could be big, but I didn't know what big meant. But I I thought there was something here. That's probably the second thing. The third thing is I thought that I would be of anyone to do this. I felt that I would be best suited to solve this. Like if I couldn't solve it, I would. I didn't know who would. Um, uh, fifth, I just thought timing was really good. Okay. And and by timing I meant the app stores being more popular and apps just being more popular. Uh, apps uh, in the dating sphere and for the Muslim market, you know, there wasn't anyone I could point to. You know, mm. I genuinely I was looking at who's our competition for this and I couldn't point to anyone, mm. which is a great place to be. I remember thinking that. I remember thinking for the Muslim world, you know, be it Muslims in the West and then Muslims in the Muslim world for, for our product. All, you know, I, I kind of felt, I, I thought as a trader, which is what I was in my banking career, which is when you're picking a stock, you sometimes you, when you're picking a stock, you're picking a company where naturally things are going that way for the company. Yeah, so so uh, it's to give Muzmatch as the example in this actually. So uh, I remember thinking about it, thinking, all right, you know, the uh, apps are obviously no doubt becoming more popular. So I felt that trend was only going to continue. Let's say for the Muslim market, I felt, all right, for the Muslim market, Muslims are going to, the taboo around finding someone online is only going to lessen over time, no doubt, because it can't get worse <laughs> than what it was. Uh, number three, in the Muslim market, their ability to, uh, oh, their, their smartphone um, devices and the quality of the smartphones is only going to improve. The internet connectivity in a lot of these Muslim countries is only going to improve. Yeah. Uh, their ability to pay is only going to improve. And I thought all these things just kind of make sense to ride this wave. Yeah. Um, uh, and for, So for me, it, it felt like this was the right place to, to persevere with. That said, I do remember like, you know, launching the app, six months after launching the app, you're checking, I was checking Google Analytics every day, you know, I'd like go to the bathroom, check Google Analytics, yeah. how many people are not on the app at any one time, yeah. and it's like three That's people. That's like me with my YouTube subscriber yeah. account, and I was like, I'm gonna scroll. <laughs> What's because... my next milestone? Yeah. And it's like three people, and you're like, great. Uh, and then it gets about 100, and you're still like, great. And for ages, it wasn't that, it was a couple of hundred. And you're thinking, man, I quit my job for this, like this mm. is minor. And you, I remember there was a point where I was like, maybe maybe I kind of fluffed this up, you know, maybe there wasn't, uh, this, this isn't as big a deal as I thought it would mm. be. Um, but then I, I do remember this random moment where somebody literally emailed in saying, oh, um, thank you, Muzmatch. I uh, found my partner, I got married, blah, blah. I was like, wow, okay, this has worked, like for real. Um, because there was a phase where the app was out, it wasn't that busy. I wasn't really hearing about it from anyone in terms of the community of what was going on or, you know, there was zero hype, if you will. Mm. Um, and it was kind of a moment where I thought, okay, like there is something tangible in how this can change people's lives. Um, uh, it definitely gave me an impetus to just carry on. Okay. Um, it wasn't like a, yeah, this is it. Let's carry on. You know, it's yeah. going to be huge now. Not at all. It was all right. Let's persevere with this. And then, and progressively, actually, and I remember it just did start growing a, a, a kind of a healthy clip. Um, and I think you know, the, kind of combined with that, despite it being really difficult, and it was still, you know, for the first one and a half years, it was just me um, uh, doing it. And I think we got to about fifty thousand members by, by the end of that, that period. Um, 
but I was enjoying it on a personal level. Okay. Like I was enjoying the process of just being in control of my day. Yeah. I was working. I was working stupid hours, uh, eighteen-hour days. I had no life. I had zero per- social life. Um, I was. I don't think I was sleeping that great mm. either. But but I was enjoying it. I was in it. Um, what, what what do you think about it that you were? Well, what was it about it that you were enjoying? Do you reckon? Uh, the control. Okay. I, and you, I remember because I still rem- I still remember being this, told this uh, in my Morgan Stanley days. Um, where I was, so I was a, I was a VP, vice president, whatever, and I was going, I was up for director, executive director, oh. which is the next level, right? Hello. Yeah, exactly, right. So big boy territory, and I remember. So I think at that time, and this was just before the financial crisis, I think, or just after, I can't remember. Um, and it, there was kind of a, uh, there was a, you know, two years was like the minimum you could get to director, um, but generally it was three. And obviously, me being me, wanted it after two years, so I was like gunning for that, um, and I didn't get it after two years, and I was fuming, and I was like, why, like I. Felt, you know, at the desk we were performing, I was doing really well, etc. And I remember there, you know, I remember being told, you know, like the, the, your problem basically, Shaz, is you're not professional enough sometimes, which I'm not, uh, and uh, you don't respond well to authority. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, that line stuck with me because I think it's still true. I don't, and I think pro- my own problem is, and, and, and me, I'm sure there's a some dose of arrogance in there, and, and um, me being stubborn to some degree. Um, uh, but un- unless I totally utterly respect and feel that the person who is leading me is all over this and is super smart and that's the person I look up to um, unless I feel that 100% I'm always like what am I doing mm. like like, you know maybe in some areas I think I can do better than this why am I not that, that level you yeah. know and it's an impatience it's just a natural impatience you know yeah. um, and part of it was that and I think partly for me it was that lack of control I hated the, like, you know, at banks, there's a lot of process. There's a lot of, that's the way things are done. These are the hoops you have to jump through, blah. blah and I hate all that. I'm just like, why? Mm. You know, why am I not just judged on this, which is more black and white? You know, I deliver this, you give me that. Mm-hmm. And it never was quite like that. Uh, and I hate that kind of stuff. Whereas when you have your own business, if it doesn't fail, if it doesn't succeed, that's yeah. on you. Yeah. You know, like you, you look back at yourself saying, yeah, I cooked some corners here. Or I didn't really work hard enough. If you're honest with yourself, sometimes you do, you work damn hard and it just doesn't work. But at least then you can honestly say, you know what? I actually genuinely 100% gave it my all and mm-hmm. it didn't work. And that's so be it. You can accept that's- that. I think that was my problem that I, or that was the one thing I really liked was I was in total control. And if this succeeded, fantastic. If it failed, it's on me. Got it. Which is a nice driver. (laughs) So it's now, we're now sort of 10 years into the mismatch journey. (laughs) Yeah. How how are things going at the moment? Like what, how how, how big is the app? Uh, Oh my God. So the boring stats are we're, I think we have four and a half million members now globally. Okay. over a hundred thousand successes, people around the world. Really, over a hundred thousand. Yeah, it is crazy. Successes in marriages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, it's it blows our minds. We, <laughs> we have three hundred people a day, more yeah. than, um, who leave the app. Yeah. And and don't come back and tell us thank you much, much. I met my partner. Don't need you anymore. Which is amazing. Yeah. And it's it blows our mind. That's we've had really weddings cool. everywhere. Yeah. I think we've got members in one hundred ninety countries. I think North Korea is one country we don't have <laughs> members in. Um, I remember it's an odd it's an odd point on uh, yeah. on, on on the maps. Um, uh, yeah, as a team, we're approaching 60 people now. I think we've hired like 25 people in mm. the last year alone um, over lockdown and over the whole work from home, um, COVID pandemic, etc. Uh, for us, thankfully, we've been hitting records. Um, so actually just last last week, we uh, last Saturday and last Sunday mm. were two record days for us on nearly every metric. Um, part of that was after Ramadan, all the Muslims wake up and just get back on the app, right? Yeah. So we've been crazy busy after Ramadan for sure. So there's part of that. Um, uh, and just for us, you know, we've what we're doing is clearly working, which yeah. is great. Um, there's a lot more to do. And I think I'm, I'm forever impatient and frustrated. You know, what, what do you mean by a lot more to do? Like, there's it's, so it's, much. It's a dating have, app. Surely, like, no, swipe message. No, done, it's, like... there, it's not. I, you know, it's, <laughs> I have one, one bit in me is always dying to do stuff. Yeah. that's never been done before to try stuff out to build stuff that hasn't been done before and done it at a quality that hasn't been done before particularly for the muslim market or, or main products i saw offered to the muslim market yeah you kind of expect it to be like a 10 percent of the quality of like a product offered to the exactly. u.s market and like, i'm like why yeah. I'm like, that's crap <laughs> yeah. like and i never wanted that and for me i was always like this is this would never be acceptable for us right yeah. um, so for us the bar has to be high okay. you know I, and i always tell our team our, our customers all use Instagram, Snapchat, they all use all these other big apps and that's where the bar is. And if yeah. we're not there, they'll think we're crap. Yeah. So for us, that's where the bar, and I, I, don't be wrong, I don't think we're quite there, mm. but that's where we strive towards. You know, okay. we're, we've effectively rebuilt, and, and, and this is one thing I'm never scared about, rebuilding the app. Yeah. You know, we've, we're, we've rebuilt it three times now and we're approaching our fourth, which, and I would say this, call it fourth rebuild, is 
probably the only one that's been more of an, a genuine iteration, mm. whereas the other three were way more of a ripper plaster yeah. off, you know? <laughs> so, stuff. yeah, exactly right. Well, you know, to give you an example, August, so we, we launched the app August, uh, no, April 2015. August 2016, which was Muzzmatch 2.0, we actually started again. So mm. it was a brand new app. And everyone had to, re had to, everyone started again from scratch. Everyone had to create a new profile. Oh, wow. And it was a bit of a disaster because everyone lost all their ex yeah. previous matches. But it was because all the changes that I had, because I spent our first year just learning from everyone, mm. learning about everything they hated, everything that they felt that we, we lacked, um, all the features that I thought that were missing. And I remember I, I put it all in a, in a big Google Sheets document. It was about 8,000 bits of feedback. Mm. And I went through it and I categorized it all. And I thought, right, which ones can we do? Mm. Which ones will we never do? And which ones do I think are really important? Sat there and designed all of what, what I thought would be Muzzmatch 2.0. Not in Word this time. Yeah. <laughs> it was in a, <laughs> in a, it was in a pirate copy of oh. Balsamic, if you know oh. what Balsamic is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was some kind of design software. And yeah. I just designed it and then built it. Um, uh, and the changes were so drastic, I thought, this is easier just to start again, um, rather than trying to somehow bodge everyone across. Mm. Um, so we did. Um, and then the third one was more of a, U, we call it UI 3.0, but it was, it was more of a UI uh, uh, revamp. And then, like I said, now we're working on the fourth one, which for me, I think is, I think we're, we're more finding our place of what is Muzzmatch? You okay. know, what is our brand? How should we frame ourselves? Uh, and where do we want to be longer term? Okay. You know, uh, how did you decide that? You know what? We're just going to delete everyone's data and make them start again. <laughs> what, surely that must have been a huge. It was. If someone was like, you know what? Let's re redo YouTube from the ground up. We're just going to yeah, delete yeah. everyone's channels. It was. Uh, <laughs> like, you know what? And it was interesting because we had to send a message out yeah. saying because people were kicking off, going, "Oh my god, my match disappeared. What have you guys done? I had to yeah. quit my profile again." And I was convinced at the time we just take the pain. Yeah. Like I, I felt taking the pain would let us move quicker than trying to find some middle ground of. Like importing profiles. And yeah, those. because okay. then you have to import their profile and somehow figure out how they could edit the old data and the new data and all that. Okay. And I thought, screw that. Yeah. Um, I want to move quick. And I, f I genuinely felt that this new version is so much better that when they see it, yeah. they will be less offended by it. it. You know, Imagine you did all that and you're like, well, it was the same as before. What, yeah. what the hell you guys have done? Like, did you just lose the database, basically? Whereas here, it was like, you do all that and you're like, whoa, okay, this is nice. Um, and I felt that change would justify... Uh, the pain that we had to inflict on. Okay. And this was like 150,000 members by that time. Right. I think so, if I remember the numbers right. So it was a decent number. But but if I look at the chart, thank God we did it because we, we overcame that pain. And then, you mm. know, gen genuinely the app was more sticky. People liked it. And uh, I think we're, we're onboarding people better. And I think people just like the app a lot more. Okay. Um, can you share revenue numbers these days? Is, uh, is that no, I can't. <laughs> I would love to. Yeah. I would say um, we do well. So I'll say a few things on it. Yeah. Um, we do, we do well. We've doubled revenue in the last year. Okay. I would say we, as a platform, we're up there. I think last year, if I remember, we were we were in the top, so in the UK, just to give you an example, in the UK, we were at the, one of the top 10, I think we were number seven, if I remember, I can't remember the exact ranking. Uh, the top seven, uh, top seven, uh, top, uh, sorry, number seven in the top 10 app any rankings by uh, top grossing dating apps in the UK. Okay. And that's across all dating apps, okay. Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, yeah, all that. So. Awesome. We're in the big boy league yeah. on that perspective. I still think we're small, don't get yeah. me wrong, um, but we've grown nicely. Um, mm. I, I think for us, everything we make goes straight back into the product, mm -hmm. like and the team and marketing and all of that. You know, we're we're not remotely cleaning anything out. Mm. Everything goes straight back in. You know, we're like despite our growth, I still feel like it's weird. I have this feeling that like any day we could die. Yeah. It's so strange. I yeah. genuinely feel it, and, and I'm same like with, same same with like my YouTube channel. As of course, the more it grows, the more I'm like, okay, this is a house of cards that yes. feels like it could come to uh, come exactly. Down and and I, I have this in my head, and, yeah. I, and it, it you get sleepless nights. Mm. You know, uh, I had the weird like it was weird. I was like, obviously we're recording this thing. I was a bit late to this thing because I was. I had some stuff on my mind I had to talk to the team about, about like how are we gonna work post COVID in the office and yeah. all this kind of stuff. And weirdly, last night I got up to pray as you do and then I couldn't go back to sleep. One half hours I was in bed with all these thoughts in my mind of how we can solve this office problem and what's the best way to, do. and it's weird, mm. I just couldn't sleep. And I was like, what the hell, <laughs> you know, this, is, this is random. But then compound that with thoughts of, oh, I, just, I just hate what we're doing in this particular area or mm. I'm not happy about this or what on earth are we doing? You know, like so I, you know, sometimes I have weird thoughts like that. Um, I guess that it probably keeps me. Uh, it probably must annoy my team. I'm sure it does. Um, yeah, but hopefully like, it just keeps us slightly on edge. I feel like I, re I read something about this. I think in one of Paul Graham's essays or, or, or somewhere like that, where it yeah. was like, you know, the problems never go away. They just change in their kind of oh, sexiness. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when yeah. you're starting out, you're like, why is the memory thing not working for five swipes? And yeah. now you're like. 
how do I get 50 people into an office? <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> that yeah, is just yeah, like yeah. a different and scale how, of problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, we talk about how, yeah. how do you do a good one-to-one? -one? Yeah. And how do you, I've learned so, I don't, think, I don't think I'm remotely there, how to manage a team, how to manage different teams. You know, one of my early on, um, I frustrate, you know, we had a very small marketing team and I, I'm sure I frustrated them mm. so much because I just couldn't figure out how to make marketing work. Okay. I'm, like, you know, what does that mean, how to make marketing work? As in, I think for me, it was more understanding. Like, I'm, you know, I'm a product CEO, whatever. I hate that title, but whatever. Yeah. I love product. I love, okay. the, you know, I'm very into, you know, even now we're designing the new, you know, Muzmatch, right? And I'm so into every every bit of the screen. Sure. I'm not like, you guys design it, show me, and let's just run with it. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. They design it and they show me stuff, but I'm very in the weeds. We, I, You know, if I look right now, I spend more hours of my day mm. consciously because I want to, with the, the UX team and with mobile team, just going through every screen of the app that we're trying to redo and rebuild and, and, and just our whole thought process. And, and for me, this obviously is part of where we're headed as a business. But anyway, because I've, A, I enjoy it and I, I get it and it makes sense. Marketing is a whole different beast. Marketing is not engineering. Yeah. Marketing, you can't necessarily just have a spec and deliver it and that's yeah. that. And it, it the, the whole creative angle, the whole, you know, uh, what is a deliverable? And, and and to be creative in a good way, should you, shouldn't you have a time, uh, a deadline? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I was talking about this now. Like, uh, you know, they, you know, to give you a really small example on this, uh, we're, we're filming an ad right now and, you know, we don't, they'd almost set themselves a, a deadline of, or, or a deadline because they wanted to deliver something, mm -hmm. but, oh, we're going to film this next week. And part, and, and which I get because, you know, I'm, I'm probably comes from, well, it does come from me that I want us to deliver on stuff, et cetera, et cetera. But then I'm like, I feel like the idea of what we're going to film, we haven't nailed yet you know, to the standard or to the level that we want. Mm. And that's where we need to get to. And it, but it's weird, it messes with my mind, so I'm sure it messes with theirs. And we haven't figured it out, no doubt. But for me, it was the appreciation of understanding that, all right, the way you manage marketing people is quite different, or creatives is different, yeah. should be different. Uh, the way I was managing it wasn't bringing out the best of them, was annoying them, I'm sure was driving them up the wall, well, did drive them up the yeah. wall. Um, and even then, we, we effectively rebuilt the marketing team, totally, you know, like, uh, I think they were frustrated with me, but fair enough, right? We rebuilt it. And then even as a team, we figured out how should we work? How does a creative team work differently from the brand people to okay. differently from other people? So you had a famous like ad campaign on the London Underground. Yeah, I love what, that one. What was the story behind that? Uh, you can just kind of tell people yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so process. the ad was a whole bunch, of, we actually did four or five, but it was all mo mostly Muslim puns, uh, puns around that. So halal, is it me you're looking for? Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Lionel Richie, <laughs> the OG. Um, uh, halal from the other side, famous Adele song. Um, you had me at halal. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Um, there was another. Uh, there was one more halal one. I can't think of. It. We had one which was we timed for um, just after the uh, we formally. Uh, I think uh, when we're leaving Brexit and all uh, when the Brexit vote happened, etc. Was um, it's time to leave the single market? We did that one. <laughs> Genius. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And we had one more. There's one that's there's that's, that's missing in all this. There was one more. Um, I can't remember what it was now. Oh yeah, halal meat. And it was like a, this one. It was a bit, a bit, but it was halal meat, which was a, a steak. With a cupid steak, oh, halal meat, as nice. in halal meat. Yeah, but, it's a bit risque. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I don't know if that that one works. But anyway, great ads went super viral. We had like celebrities, comedians putting on their socials. Yeah. Really good. Um, uh, I, I, I'm going to take the credit for those. The the lines were all mine. Nice. Um, um, I always felt that if we're going to do, especially a tube campaign. Yeah, it's got it's got to be funny. Yeah, it's got to be good, and it's yeah. got to be really good. Yeah, it can't just be average because what's yeah. the point, right? It's either really good that you get noticed, or forget it. There's yeah. no point doing it. And it was weird because it was a bit of a punt because, you know, as a campaign, you know, did we run it and suddenly get tons of downloads? No, yeah. didn't make a single difference, yeah. right? But what it did do genuinely is that intangible brand thing. It got it got the name out there. Like people heard of Muzmatch. Exactly. And, heard of and, before, I, and I remember we were yeah. we were hiring, you know, we were interviewing people, engineers, etc. Yeah. I remember I'm I'm. You know, you know, and most of our team aren't Muslim, right? Mm. You know, we've got a lot of non-Muslims in the team, particularly on the engineering side. Um, and for them to be remotely interested in working for an app like ours, I I'm like, it must take something, surely, yeah. right? Uh, you know, to go and tell your parents or your other oh, half, yeah, yeah I work <laughs> at this Muslim dating app, I think, right? <laughs> They're probably thinking, what the hell? Yeah. Um, but they do, right? And I remember asking them, like, have you heard of Muslim Match before? And so many of them said, oh yeah, I remember the Tube campaign. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And and it was hearing that from so many people where I thought, okay, this thing worked. Mm. Um, it did cement the brand, it made it legit, yeah. uh, which is good. But I think that we only got away with that because the strength of the campaign itself, mm. um, the idea was good, it was funny, it was viral. Yeah. Uh, it, it's hard. How, how much does it cost to run a campaign on the underground? So the, the, at the time, this was, when, when did we run it? I think we ran it, we ran one every, uh, a couple of years, but at the time it was about 20, 25 grand. 
But it depends oh, what you go for. Okay. That was, from memory, every other carriage on the, on the underground. Okay, for how long? Like a week? No, two weeks. Okay. Yeah, so two weeks, um, um, so to get an, every other carriage. So, so to get a single ad on every other carriage of the underground yeah. for two weeks, around about 25 25 That was then. I don't know where it is now. The biggest complaint I, I hear whenever I mention mismatch to people yeah. <laughs> is that guys on there are really creepy. Yeah. To what extent is this like a problem with the guys versus a problem with the dating industry versus a problem with the app itself? Like... I'm still, uh, I think what's, I'm, what's the deal? What yeah, yeah. I think I'm still trying to figure out where does the problem lie? Yeah. Is it us? Is it the community? Is it guys? So I think my conclusion is guys yeah. are idiots. <laughs> okay. um, I think from everything I've seen, and if you look at, you know, forget Muzmatch, if you just look at the general call it dating apps, mm. the mainstream dating apps, read between the lines, their biggest problem is the behavior of men, mostly. Really? Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I mean, what was the premise of Bumble? It was... Yeah, women... Not that it was anti-men, yeah. but really it was um, not happy with the male dynamic, the way men behave, the way men treat women, talk to women, etc. Et and their whole branding was all around uh, uh, the female perspective, yeah. right? Um, and it's it, it's a great branding talking mm. point, right? And that's for them what sets it apart. If you look at the app itself, I would argue it's actually not massively different mm. to other apps. In all honesty, um, my research showed me that. But oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's not massively different. In all honesty, um, yeah. but obviously. Uh, that's their uh, USP to mm. some degree. Whether, uh, I, and I presume, and I'm reading between, uh, maybe men hate that feature that women have to go first. I don't know. I mean, I quite like it. It uh, means it, the onus is not on me to start yeah, so the discussion. It's interesting, right? So we we actually built Women Goals First in Muzmatch in 2016, I think it was, okay. for about a week. Okay. And most of women, so we built it. Yeah. And most of women were like, I don't want to go first. Yeah. Why do I have to message the guy? He should message me. And we were like, this community is not ready for it. So we yeah. got rid of it after a week. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we tried it, failed it. And, and there was another app out there for the Muslim market that tried to do it. I, th I think it's a bit dead now, but they what? tried it. And it, yeah. Because some things work. So here's a good another. So some things work great in principle, yeah. but not in reality. A good example, I was today just reading about another app, mainstream app. Um, which were saying, oh, you know, like uh, the death of swiping and all this kind of stuff. And there, they had a either a feature or was a central part of the app was that the more you talk to someone, the more their face unblurs. And we were mentioned in this article oh. because we allow men and women to blur their photos if they want and yeah. control who can see it. Anyway, so that was their principle. So the principle, great, you know, you're you're committed, you start talking mm. to someone, and obviously the more interest you you mm. show in them, the more you talk, the more effort you put in the more reward in that you'll see who they are. <laughs> That's a good filtering mechanism, surely. Yeah. Now the problem is, is great in principle, reality. The reality is within reason, we are time poor, mm. right? The reality is, you know, if you're, if you're single and wanting to meet people, let's say you go down this road of talking to people without knowing who, what they're about. And you can't deny that attraction. It's important. Of course it is. You know, we're, it's, it's in our, it's in our, it's in our DNA, right? It's in our, our, our basic human instincts of we're, we're attracted to people, uh, and attraction is a valid reason of why people get together, right? <clears throat> so to deny that, I think, is, is just isn't sensible, I, I think, personally. So anyway, so let's say you went down this road and you were talking to five people in a row and you invested this time in talking to them and then each one, you're like, not my cup of tea, mm. that was a waste of time. Probably after a couple of hours, you're like, this, I don't, this is just not working for me, yeah. you know? You know, it, the converse could be the, the, the effect whether you, you speak to five people and they're all amazing and you're attracted to them. Yeah. Great, right? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're not fussy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But but whatever. So I just think uh, sometimes some things work great in principle and not in reality. Um, I forgot why I was even talking about this. But anyway, um, to go back to your earlier point. So I think genuinely there is a problem with how men particularly, uh, uh, the approach they have online. In, okay. in how they talk to people. I think there's a certain ease in how you can talk to, to someone. Yeah. And because of the ease to start a conversation, yeah. the ease in how you can end that conversation. Or not, or choose not to end it, i.e. ghost. Right? Okay, yeah. And I think that's a, this is just a, a modern phenomenon now. Yeah. Of, um, um, you know, just now it's, it's easier than ever to build a connection with someone. Yeah. Be it on Facebook and all these social networks yeah. or whatever. You know, a random person that you've never ever met, you can message them yeah. and have a conversation. And then no one feels like they owe each other anything yeah. that doesn't carry there's on. There's no like social cost of just ignoring them. Exactly, yeah. right? And it's the same here. And I think, uh, you know, so I think while we're at this juncture where this is relatively new, mm. that's why it's difficult to, to deal with. So I think part of that, no doubt there's a role of platforms like ours to encourage good behavior yeah. and deter bad behavior. And I think one thing Muzmatch has always tried to be about, we're trying to bring out the good, get rid of the bad, mm. you know? So things like, you know, we were the first app to automatically censor bad language, mm. you know? So if, you're, if you swear at someone on the app, it's automatically censored, yeah. which other apps didn't have, yeah. which baffled me. We were the first app, you know, on a religious perspective to allow you to have a chaperone in, 
yeah. just novel. No one yeah, else is doing that, that right? Yeah. Exactly, right? No one's doing it. And I remember thinking about it at the time, thinking, this is a no-brainer. Like, mm. why have we not got this? I built it and whatever. Um, uh, we were the first app on the security side to have self-verification, mm. right? Um, uh, we were actually the first app, I believe, to have an oath that you agree to before you use it. Mm. So when you sign up to Muzmatch, um, it will literally, there was a screen that would come up before you chat to anyone that would say, Bismillah, which means in the name of God. And it would say, basically, I promise to use the app properly. And mm. if I don't, I'll be blocked and banned. Mm. Uh, and you have to accept it to continue. Now, of course, I, you know, maybe 90% of people don't even read it and just go, yeah. whatever, right, next. But just by having that sets the tone of yeah. what isn't isn't acceptable on this platform. Um, and, uh, and it's interesting to see other apps begin to introduce some form yeah. of oath, some agreement that you as a user uh, agree to. Um, um, which is which I found interesting. Um, and one thing by having that, and, and equally we have, you know, when you match with someone, we do something really simple and trivial, which oh. is at the start of the chat, we just say, keep it halal. Yeah. Um, and we'll have a funny line like, God is always watching. Yeah. Or <laughs> keep it halal, uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, like our team see what you're up to, whatever, right? Yeah. We, we have it. And of course, most people probably ignore it, but yeah. it, for me, it was important that that was always there mm. because I wanted to make sure that we set the tone. Yeah. Our job is setting the tone. Um, and the flip side of that equally is if something bad does happen, do mm. we turn a blind eye to it or do we take action? And for us, we firmly take action. Yeah. You know, we get rid of, you know, I even tell the team, you know, we, we've we blocked 100,000 accounts, which is a lot. Wow. Okay. But because we know what is and isn't acceptable and what we do and don't want on our platform. So why, do you have any kind of... Oh, but, but, but sorry, yeah. I was, just to finish the, yeah, the final please. point. The Muslim men problem. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, what's the deal with that? Yeah, what's yeah. the deal with that? I actually think, so I, I, I thought about this and I was, as a man, and I thought, why are Muslim men generally quite useless at all this? Mm. Uh, I'm, being, I'm speaking very generally to cover course, all the, yeah. the politically correct community out there, but I'm very politically incorrect at times. But anyway, how and why are men, Muslim men generally quite useless when it comes to I think part of it is uh, our upbringing, right? We're, mm. we're brought up, and maybe slightly less so now, but generally, let's say my generation, whatever, we were brought up generally in a fairly segregated world, yep. right? You didn't really chill with girls. You yeah. didn't really, uh, there wasn't, there, those social settings weren't really there. Yeah. And probably your only interactions later on were maybe at university. But even then, if I, if I look at, you know, me at university, generally I had a very male group, yep. and a female, whatever, right? So we're brought up like that. And mm. then you are, you know, by, told by your family you're under pressure to get married and find yeah. someone, <laughs> right? You know, and you're like, what the hell? Yeah. What do I know about women, right? Yeah. And then... You meet someone, you chat to them, you get married, and you suddenly live with some uh, with with a girl, mm. right? Or you live you live together. You've never lived with someone before, or you've only ever lived at home. So you're navigating all of this. And for some people, you're living at home with this other person, mm. right? How you know that's difficult. And so you you undergo no training. And I actually looked at it, and I, I thought, okay, if you look at the the you know the Western world, the non-Muslims, right? How do they meet people and all that stuff? And they obviously you know from a young relatively younger age, whatever, from teenage years onwards. They have relationships, mm. you know, all that kind of stuff. They go through the, all of that. They live with people, uh, with people of the opposite sex. They do all of this stuff. And that's an education, right? Mm. Relationships that don't work out, are, they are an education. That's part of you learning about you, mm. about how, how, how do I deal with other people? How do I deal with other situations, mm. uh, difficult situations, good, the bad, the ugly, right? Um, and that's how you evolve as a person. Yeah. And I do think for as Muslim guys and girls, but, but you know, let's say guys in this, in this particular scenario, don't have that education. Mm. So I think we're, we're slightly socially illiterate in some ways mm. and we're playing catch up. Yeah. And I think I would genuinely, not to give them, you know, to, to give them the benefit of the doubt, I would put some of it to that okay, as, a, yeah. as a reason, sure. um, to be fair. No, I think that's, that's entirely reasonable. We were, <laughs> I was on a, a road trip to Cornwall with the boys over the weekend. And we were talking about this phenomenon of like, why are Muslim men weird? Yeah. And we were sort of trying to come up with like pet, pet theories around this. Um, I think, oh yeah, a big part of it is the, the, the gender segregation mm. stuff. Because I think, like, if, if I think back to my experience, coming to university, I wasn't drinking and that sort of barred me from the 98% yes. of the social interaction that was happening at university, especially as a first year, which is, revolves around alcohol. Totally. Then it's like, okay, cool, there are these societies, like the Islamic society, the Pakistan society mm. and things. And in the Islamic society, the first time I had heard that, like, talking to a girl is bad, basically, was through the Islamic society. I was like, whoa, okay, <laughs> that's rogue. Yeah. But like for most of the people there who had been, been brought up in more like sort of surrounded by the Muslims and stuff, mm. that was just normal. Like, yeah. Of course I'm not going to be friends with a girl. That's just mm. ridiculous. Why? Yeah, 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 yeah. How on earth can you possibly imagine that you'd, you'd even live with a girl? Like, well, yeah. you know, what's, what's going on there? And it, in a way, gender sort of 
free mixing is so so stigmatized you know mm. some people say rightly or wrongly based yeah, on yeah. Well, like w w whatever the rules yeah. are but i feel like that must have an impact on the kind of development for sure um and i feel like for me i feel thankful now that i've got i've got female friends and i live with a girl who can <laughs> yeah. point out be like okay the you're way an idiot. That, yeah <laughs> you know in this context you're an idiot the, the, the way you said that thing was not sensitive because that yeah. person is like oh my god girls are sensitive about stuff yeah, what the yeah, hell yeah. i just yeah, 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 yeah for sure. That's not a model that I had. And, and even like, you know, you know, personal level for me, yeah. right? It, it's an education. I say things I have no idea. I say things that in my head aren't remotely big or aren't yeah. remotely major. And then for the other person, it's massive, right? And especially for, mm. for, for women. I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure I definitely have. But, but uh, and that's an education for me to be like, okay, not everyone thinks this way yeah. or, or I need to be sensitive to this or I need to be more accustomed to this or attuned to this or whatever. Um, uh, and I do think you're, you're dead right. You know, you've got the religious angle of the element of remixing and all that mm. kind of stuff, which I won't go into. Um, but but I think there's one thing that, you know, uh, um, I think we as a community have failed somewhat is, and Muslim is a great example of this, actually. We, I, I've often been asked, did you have loads of pushback when we launched Muslim Match? You know, is this, you know, because at the time, remember, mainstream dating maps were, were, were yeah, quite, taboo, they were quite yeah. taboo, right? Yeah. It was like, uh, a bit, you know, whatever. And, and they had a bad rep. I think yeah. that rep has improved over time and it's become the norm um, now, obviously. Whereas for us, just the fact that we were an app, a dating app for Muslims was like, whoa, yeah. how haram is this? Exactly, right? or, yeah. But then, um, you know, thankfully we've been super successful. Right? Yeah. Um, um, and I think, you know, we've been successful because the need was clearly there. And people have said, oh, did you have a lot of pushback? And I remember thinking I would. And genuinely, I don't think we've had as big a pushback as I thought we would by religious community or whatever. Yeah. And I think, A, because... Um, the need is clearly there, number one. Mm. But I think B, because no one solved this, they haven't solved it. Yeah. You know, they haven't <laughs> figured out, like, there's a big crisis in the Muslim community of yeah. how do you get the young Muslims married and how do they stay married, yeah. right? And you can hark on about the old ways of doing things, but unless you come up with something that works mm. and that is approachable for young people and talks to them in a voice that works, you're wasting your time. And yeah. I think up until now, we have religious, the religious community haven't done this because it's difficult and it's messy. Yeah. You know, talking about, I would love for mainstream religious elders and speakers to talk about how to navigate online as a Muslim. Yeah. You know, like, how to how talk. They, how would they know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. but that's, that's yeah. part of it. How would they know? Yeah. But even for them to just rightly, uh, uh, and so we're having to fill the gap here, yeah. right? We're having to talk about these things of how do you navigate online? How do you deal with red flags? Mm. Um, um, how do you approach someone online? What should you even talk about? What is good and isn't good to talk about online? Yeah. All this yeah. kind of stuff, which are gaps, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, but part of me thinks because this is new, yeah, you either try and figure it out yourself. Uh, you, uh, you can't just be you can't just be offended by it or give up because it's hard. Yeah. It's on us to figure it out. Interesting. So changing gear slightly. Yes. Um, you presumably have access to ton like <laughs> yes. z zillions of data points around <laughs> yeah. kind of preferences, yeah. men preferences, women preferences, and so on. Do you have like a list of w what are the things that a Muslim <laughs> girl is looking for in a Muslim guy? <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> uh, I thought it was a doctor, YouTuber, was the, <laughs> was the top of the list. I thought no. Um, uh, profession, I probably I would say. Profession is the main one. Yeah, okay. I would say it's probably the biggest one. Um, I don't want to say stroke income. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, but income, no doubt, is important. Okay. Uh, and I've I've heard that and I've seen it. So whether you imply that by profession, yeah. uh, is part of it. Uh, but I actually think part of it comes down to actually there is there is a gap between Muslim men and Muslim women. I think Muslim women are academically and professionally yeah. way ahead of yeah. Muslim men. Definitely. And, and know, more def serious yeah. and more wanting Wait, to get married and like that, more mature yeah. in like every all single that, domain. Right? <laughs> yeah. So we're playing catch up already. <laughs> and they're like, where's yeah. the guys who are at our level? And yeah. that's where we get stuck. And that's where they get stuck. Okay. And there is that frustration. Yeah. And I don't know how we solve that. But whatever. Like we're trying our mm. best. But. Uh, the, the least we can do is help them identify the people who come out of their criteria, but okay. whatever. So I think no like, doubt they're trying to find people who profession, are profession, income. Profession, income. So um, for the record, m me posing with a Tesla, <laughs> <laughs> but because like income signaling. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you, you know, bo box. You might have gone too far. <laughs> okay, <fine. laughs> you know, you know. Me holding up my million subscribers YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, kill that. Okay, kill we're that, gonna you know, gonna change. You know, we don't need that. Right? that image uh, right that's now. too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't need that. Um, yeah. But I would say, uh, but it, me it posing a selfie with my stethoscope at work. It's like, oh, hello. That's not bad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Stethoscope, the doctor vibes, yeah. you know, that's good. Um, you know, uh, the guitar singing, you know, uh, certain demographic yeah, like Yeah, but also like, it's a bit try hard. Yeah, it's, it's like, you little... know, music is haram. Yeah. Oh, there's, you know, you've got all the baggage associated <laughs> with know, yeah. and, any and, type of signaling. And your singing voice, you know, I need a bit of work. <laughs> I know. I was thinking in the shower this morning, I really want to find a singing teacher that I can have two lessons a week with. Yeah. 
Who was I, I was listening to, have you heard these songs by Olivia Rodrigo recently? I've heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. A driver's License, yes, like, kind of yeah, went all viral. Yeah, yeah, heard, so yeah. her album came out like two days ago. Yeah. And I've been having, listening to that on repeat. And she's just absolutely sick at singing. And I was like, damn, how'd you do that? And I was speaking to, it was a complete, complete tangent. I was speaking to a YouTuber friend of mine who's yeah. a professional like musician. And I was like, bloody hell, how are you so good at singing? She was like, well, I've been having singing lessons for 20 years. Wow. And I was like, damn, Let's okay, see. lessons do help. Okay, do cool, help. I'm, I'm yeah, going to yeah. get lessons. <laughs> Anyway, that is. You're gonna hit that yeah. note. Okay, um, so income no, profession. I think yeah. income profession. Um, uh, not being weird is the probably the final one. How, how do girls define weird? So you know what? I, I and I've seen this because I have sometimes the misfortune of actually reading those match chats. Okay. Um, particularly when something gets reported. Yes. Um, uh, def definitely, there's a there's an art to a conversation, okay. no doubt, right? Um, there's an art to how to hold a conversation, how mm. to ask the right questions, how you know, just how to carry a conversation. And I think a lot of Muslim men. Um, aren't very good at it okay you know it's very either uh, and don't be wrong i actually think muslim women to some degree as well but mm. sometimes it can be very tick boxy you know because you're on you know you're on a platform like ours most yeah. you know, you're, you're out there to find the person you're going to marry right and no doubt most likely you have this criteria in your head yeah and for some people they're straight on the criteria oh, so from day like, from, from the i'm looking for abc yeah 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 people be like, like weird yeah it's okay. like too much too soon right yeah. like you know if you look at it Probably the first thing you want to see is kind of, just, am I just interested in this person? Yeah. Forget everything else. Are they just an interesting person mm -hmm. that I can talk to? And then you can drip into the other bits, right? Yeah. Of, oh, like, what do you do for a living? And yeah. blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that art of conversation is definitely lacking. Um, and I've heard that a lot. Um, uh, I would probably say, and you know, you touched on it earlier, which is, generally speaking, Muslim women are way more serious and their intent is way stronger than a lot yeah. of Muslim men. Not all, but a lot of Muslim men. Um, so for them, the moment they find a Muslim man where the, he's equally on that same wavelength of being cool with the intent, yeah. you know, a Muslim man saying, oh, I'm cool with if you want to get family involved early. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. You know, happy to talk. Because it doesn't mean you're getting, getting married, right? Yeah. But I'm happy to talk to your mum or your dad, whatever. Yeah. Fine. If, that, if, that's, oh. if that's important to you, cool. Yeah. You know, um, uh, that like I think for a lot of Muslim women, it's a clear marker. The big thing I've heard time and time again, especially by Muslim women where things haven't worked out is, um, he didn't want to talk to his, uh, it took him three months to tell his family about me. You know, like things like that, right? Where I'm like... That's not that rogue in like the white uh, people dating. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm not. That's, yeah. like, that's like three years that's and like, you're like, yeah. oh, by the way, I met someone. But, there yeah, you go. Okay, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas obviously for the, for the Muslim spectrum is different, yeah. right? Okay. But, but whereas I'm like, okay, well, there's, you know, why, right? Yeah. Um, because it, like I said, it doesn't mean you're getting married, but at mm. least it shows that I'm, I'm serious and this is what I'm looking yeah. for, right? To, to even remotely involve a family member. Yeah. Um, so I think, I actually think, and, and the, the thing is, which is good for Muslim men is, because that bar is so down yeah, low. Just being polite. Is yeah, all, is all I'm you not need. even joking. <laughs> yeah. like having a remotely sensible profile with just yeah. normal, normal photos. Yeah. Being so not like just, eight buttons under. Yeah, yeah, none of that. Yeah, you want one button there. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But like normal photos, yeah. and I mean it just like normal, uh, just a sensible, normal profile yeah. with nothing too OTT. Nothing you know? too fancy, yeah. Um, and just having a normal, sensible conversation. Yeah. So that's you're in the yeah, you're top five percent. I'm telling you, and people don't realize that yeah. they really don't. Um, um, so I think for, for Muslim men, if you're half decent, you're you're, you're in good stead. You know. Yeah, because like I've so been... you've got hope. Oh, sick. <laughs> there is hope for you. <laughs> all right, I need to sort my profile out and get yeah, rid of yeah, the, yeah, all the yeah. all the flexing. Yeah. Um, so I, I was speaking to another friend of mine who. Um, yeah, this, this this guy actually emailed me because mm. because often I joke and like joke yeah. I say joke often I, often I say in my YouTube videos about how I'm single and looking yeah. for a wife that's... and so on. Joking, not um, joking, right? And so, so he emailed me being like, look, I've helped loads of my mates, you know, get better with women. I'm, yeah. I'm going to help you out as well. Hitch. Um, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of messaged the, him, him the other day because I, I was asking me like, hey, Michael, any, any tips on how you have an interesting conversation with someone mm. over thinking over like Hinge or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, you don't need to be fancy about it. You can literally just be like, hey, 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 how's your day going? Yeah. And I was like, my mind was blown. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. It's true. I thought I had to, in the first message, you know, <laughs> you know, be quirky, be witty, be, be, fun, be funny, comment something about the profile, not comment on a photo because that's weird. Come on, other thing. He no. was just like, no, man, just say, hey, how's it going? And yeah, you'll yeah, yeah. <laughs> start, start a conversation. Because oh, yeah. I'm telling you, and he's right. Yeah. The, the, to be normal sets you apart now okay. because so many people think they have to be this thing yeah. or act in a certain way, which yeah. is which is abnormal. And I'm sure, particularly for women, it must mm. be tiring. Yeah. Like getting that kind of interest like, or that. Yeah. It's like, oh, whatever, you know, like, uh, uh, and I think it, it'll be refreshing. I'm sure, I, mean, I can't speak for women, I'm not mm. one, but I'm sure it was refreshing to just find someone just normal with their head screwed on. Yeah. Um, who can have, who can hold a good conversation. And you're right, it doesn't have to be like, uh, a lot of people don't, 
you know, asking about their day mm. is kind of different to asking about their day and actually being interested in what, what mm. in, in their response, right? Uh, and then that going from there, to, you know, they're going to somewhere. So yeah, there, there, there is, you don't want to be tick box questions yeah. either. You okay. know, like you want to be genuinely like, so interested. Just a deep profile yeah, today. Yeah. yeah, just, just yeah. Tunisia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ding, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, it's just like 4 a.m. messages when you hear someone's working Classic. on a project. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> yeah. Just woke up thinking of you, you know, none of that. <laughs> Um, what, do you have any uh, thoughts on, for example, mm. a 23-year-old Muslim girl yeah. and a 23-year-old Muslim guy are in very different places when it comes to yes. intent of, for marriage. Yeah. Do you have a, a theory on what is the ideal mm. age gap to get to, you know, wh what age is the man to be at the same level as like a 25-year-old woman, for example? I think uh, this, is a, this is a hard. Uh, mm. being, gen being very general in my opinion here, I would say... I think men did no doubt take longer. Yeah. <laughs> is, we take longer to cook. Um, uh, even if I just look back at myself, mm. I think it was after about 27, 28, where even I felt that I had matured in some way. Yeah. People still say I'm not mature, by the way. But anyway, yeah. where I felt I'd matured, I think uh, job-wise, I was in a better place. Yeah. I felt like I'd figured things out a little bit more of life or whatever, or even about me or what I was doing. Um, and I think I was just a lot more attuned to you know, not necessarily what it's like to be in a relationship, but, but this whole dynamic of meeting some, someone and talking to them and getting to know them, this whole thing. Whereas if I look at myself before then, I think I was very immature. I, you're not consciously thinking about it with a, with a grown up mentality. I think you're okay. quite young then. So I do think... What do you mean by grown up mentality? As in understanding the, call it, I'd say understanding the longer term consequences of things that you say and do. Okay. Um, you have you you don't remotely think like that. Mm. Like everything is now. You just do stuff. Yeah. Which is kind of good. Don't get me wrong, because you know it's fun, whatever, right? But I do think, um, let's say at twenty, uh, and this is why I don't think it's a, a firm rule mm. because some people do grow together, yeah. right? You know, let's say two twenty-three year olds with a lot of patience grow mm. up together, and you know it's like a beautiful thing with two people, and it, it's a, they've evolved together and they become this amazing, either you know, indiv two individuals or this amazing couple mm. because of the way they've bounced off each other from, from then. But then probably more often, I would say, I don't know what statistics are, but more often I would say they probably end up going like that, right? Because mm. they grow apart because they're like, I didn't, whatever I was, whatever reason I thought I was with this person then is not who I am now, Yeah. you know? And it's your own evolution. I do think um, now for, for us, you know, let's say in the West here, uh, I do think it's like 28-ish where... Job-wise, education-wise, your own mental growth, mm. uh, you're at a place where you've more figured life out. Okay. And what you want out of life, and, and by implication then, what you want in a partner. Okay. I think so. you, you have a better idea then. Whereas probably before, m most likely if you were to be honest about it, the person you were with were just kind of by accident. Mm. You know, you just, mm. I don't know. you just Happen to be friends at uni or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but this is why it's hard. And this is why... You know, so many dating apps have all this science of we are scientific yeah. dating and all this kind of stuff. You know, we've got all this personality yeah. and we don't have it. And, and I'm still deep down a little bit cynical of it because I'm genuinely convinced there is no science of why two people will work yeah. and don't work. There isn't. Right. No one can ever explain why this combination of personalities work, right? Mm. And by the same token, sometimes, uh, you know, the accident, your friend, right, uh, that you end up getting with, right, it can work really well because... The premise of you two getting on uh, uh, was there was no guard, there was mm. no pretense, this was it. And, you know, there obviously was something you liked about that person, which is why you got with them. Um, and you naturally kind of grow because yeah. you're patient. It's hard and it is messy, yeah. but that's why it's fascinating. I don't think for so many things, I think there isn't a rule as such. There's general advice or the general thoughts. Mm. Um, but there's, I equally think there's plenty of exceptions, which... I guess keep it interesting. Yeah. So I'd love to have a clear answer. I don't think I have it. Okay. But if I had to be, give you the lazy answer, I would say, yeah, for guys, no doubt, I think it is a bit older because mm. I think we need time to, to mature. <laughs> Fair play. Um, another thing I'm curious about, how popular is the blurred photos feature? And like, because, because, because that's interesting. That, that was like mm. a novel thing when you guys introduced yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like, what, what's the story uh, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think when I last checked, something like 20% of women okay. um, and... 5% of men. Okay. <clears throat> it used to be a female only feature. Okay. And then we had, um, um, and then we had a, a quite a few men, uh, particularly in the community who were, let's say, well known, who wanted to be private. And I yeah. was like, actually, I can understand it even as a guy, if you want to be private and use yeah. the platform. So therefore, 
um, uh, you should be able to have it. So anyway, both genders can decide to choose to blur their photos. And then we went on a whole new, a whole journey of how do you unblur photos? Mm. Do you both unblur when it matches? Can only once, can, does, does the male mm. photos unblur and then the women can uh, unblur afterwards? We yeah. changed it about 10 times okay. and we, I don't think we fully, uh, in the end we resorted to, we just leave it to you guys. You can decide who, to, who wants to unblur when, you can blur it back again if you want. And fine. Yeah, so we've been on we've been on this whole journey of, of figuring out how to unblur the photos once you've blurred it, right? Yeah. But anyway, we actually did we actually did some uh, analysis on what's the effect of how oh, unblurred yeah, photos. Oh yeah, that'll be my next question. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, I, knew, I knew you were itching at this. <laughs> like, Give me data. Yeah. So we found statistically with blurred photos. Let's say oh, this is from a female perspective because I think we did it when only women were, had uh, blurred photos. But anyway, statistically, you were more likely to get a match with blurred photos. Oh. Yeah. However, yeah. you are more likely to be unmatched straight after. <laughs> so, because I think for men, they would be like, she's blurred, whatever, I'll take the punt and like her. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, yeah, you like them back, you match, whatever. But then the moment, I guess, he sees your photo mm. and he's like, oh, not my cup of tea, he'd unmatch. Uh, so that's what we found in the data. Um, so we, generally speaking, you would say having blurred photos leads to poorer quality matches yeah. uh, and not as good conversations. Yeah. So we actually did a thing, um, I think it was about six months ago where we, because the principle of having blurred photos is great, mm. privacy and all that, but the practicality isn't yeah, like, because, <laughs> you know, like I said, we are, you know, we're visual creatures, yeah. both men and women, right? Um, and, 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 you know, to deny that I think is, is, is naive yeah. personally. Um, so what we did was um, we educated users better of, all right, if you want blurred photos, this is the effect. Mm. You get poorer quality matches, you will get seen less, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. All these kind of things, you know, the, the quality will be poorer for you. Um, uh, and so we did all that and generally we found is, um, you know, uh, which was the intended effect, but fewer people decided to blur their photos. Okay. So I think now we've got it down to like 15% or something. Interesting. I think at the peak it was 30 from memory, sorry. So, so uh, uh, I yeah. feel like this is one of those very inconvenient truths about life that people are superficial. Yeah. And, and looks matter. It looks matter. Yeah. So. <laughs> But, it's, but the thing is, yeah, though, this is what I it's, find it's baffling. Just, it's just not very woke to even yeah, 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 talk yeah, yeah. about the fact that looks matter no, in course, the slightest. But, it's completely unacceptable. But we're, but. it's the whole, like, you know, uh, so let's say you go on the Islamic perspective, right? Yeah. A woman can be married for four, four things, four things. Lineage, wealth, beauty, and uh, religion, yeah. right? And beauty's one. Yeah. Also, and, and, yeah. <laughs> wealth and lineage are also not <laughs> yeah, yeah. On, on particularly woke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, like, you know, Lord, Lord Mountbatten. But yeah. yeah, you know, it's like, um, uh, but, but beauty is one, right? Yeah. For a reason. Uh, and, and no doubt, look, uh, basic human instinct and what's in us, uh, in our innate yeah. nature is both men and women, there is an element of attraction to yeah. the opposite gender, right? Yeah. And looks is one. There, mm. is an ide there is an ideal of beauty, whether mm. you like it or not, right? And, you know, no doubt in the West that the ideal is programmed to some extent, but it's there. Uh, so you can't fight it. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and no doubt, and don't get me wrong, in this whole situation, women get a hard time oh, because definitely. they're yeah. beaten over the head with this, with this vision of beauty and this, yeah. this standard that they're having to be held to, right? So no doubt the setup doesn't make it easy for them, right? But uh, at the heart of it, and, you know, we can't deny that, both for men and for women, looks are so important. And they are. And there's nothing wrong with it. Mm. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Mm. And like I said, you know, there are apps out there that try and... Uh, it was a, one thing we're trying to do, sorry, to, to, to slightly counter that. So let's say you've got blurred photos. Mm. So imagine you've got a profile now. And our profiles are quite rich. There's like 22 different data points on the yeah. profile. There's a lot that you can put on there. Um, and we're actually adding more. So our goal is... You know, how can we encourage people to be slightly less superficial? Mm. How can we bring out your personality better yeah. on the app in different ways? You know, be it with voice, be it with video, yeah. etc. So we got some cool stuff that we're looking to build um, quite soon. Uh, especially that will help the blurred profiles, but actually yeah. will help everyone. Um, you know, how do I, how do I get someone attracted to me, not just based on a photo? Yeah. That's the yeah, heart that's, of it, right? That's, that's, that's the exactly. Thing. And then the flip side, let's say more so for women, is. Yeah. How can you know the, the you know how can we help them determine how serious the guy is? Okay. Yep. If we can answer those two questions, well, if any dating gap, yeah. let's say, can I, that's like gold, and that is okay. where we're striving uh, towards. Um, uh, and it's hard. Mm. This is really hard because you're trying to tackle that in a way that you can solve at scale. Yeah. That you can solve for men. That's that you can solve for women. That you can solve using technology. You, you know, it's it's a complicated problem. You know, some things like I said sound great in principle. Mm. But trying to nail that in reality is very difficult. Um, but but we haven't finished. We've got a ton of stuff that, and that's what for me keeps me excited. Like I've got so many ideas mm. where now, thank God, we've got a team where 
the art ideas we can actually build, yeah. which is amazing. Like, it's such a great place to be. And it, that's what keeps me buzzing, you know, genuinely. How, how, how does it feel? Because like, you know, 100,000 weddings have happened mm. because of the app. Mm. That's a lot. Like it's a lot. You as an individual are having a needle moving impact <laughs> on... <laughs> the birth like, rate. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which for the most is already high. <laughs> uh, no, you're right. It is... That, that's going to be weird, right? You know, I'll tell you, the, way, the weirdest and satisfying, most satisfying thing I had was once I was on the DLR, the, the train, uh, for those who don't know, in, in Kenya. Anyway, I was on the train and um, the guy on the seat in front of me was on Muzmatch. Mm. And I just happened to just like look over and I, saw, yeah. I was like, hold on, that's Muzmatch. Yeah. And trust me, the feeling I had was like, what? like that's when it hit me when I was yeah. like, wow, like this is, it sounds weird, but it's real. Yeah. Like people use it in their own time and mm. they, you know, they're getting use out of it, they're getting value out of it. Um, and definitely, you know, the number, like I remember once I was at this event and this, um, she's like a matchmaker, quite well known in the community. And she came up to me and she was like, um, Shaz, you know, you're putting me out of business here. Cause like, and she was like, for real, she's like, mm. the, if I speak to all my clients, the, the biggest reason they're not using me mm. and, you know, practically the biggest reason I've, uh, that, that people are telling me they're getting married is be because Muzmatch is working. Nice. And I was like, great. <laughs> I was like, that's literally what we're here for. You yeah. know, we'll put you out of business. But, but I was like, great, um, it's working. And you know, the, yesterday somebody emailed me saying, oh, you know, th you know it was their success story. And mm. they said, by the way, my sister also found someone on your app and my brother also found someone. And I'm like, bloody hell, the whole right. family. <laughs> the whole family nailed, on the app. <laughs> right? um, and it's really good, you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's amazing. It genuinely is. And like our mission, uh, you know, and I would tell the team, our mission is transforming how Muslims meet and marry. Yeah. That's like our mission yeah. globally, it's what we want to do. Um, you know, like we've definitely made huge strides in the West for Muslims in the West. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're looking like to the Muslim world. How are they going to evolve? You yeah. know, because no doubt that young Muslims in the Muslim world, their perspective on marriage, their willingness to be empowered to find their own path, it's all changing, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to be the platform to help them on that journey, right? Um, we've no doubt got tons of work to do on that as well. But But that's kind of where... That's what excites me. You know, that's my mark on the world. When all is said and done, I want, you know, Muzmatch to be genuinely an app or a platform where people look up to it saying, you know, the, the real world impact in the community of what we did. You know, I think okay. that's major. Yeah, mate, that's really cool. Um, I feel like that's a good place to end it because yes. our, our lunch has just arrived. Yes, perfect. And then you can tell me about your thoughts against MBAs. <laughs> yeah. And we'll do that offline because I don't think I it'll be relevant to it. I can't, I can't <laughs> <Yeah>. wait. <laughs> nice. All right. But yeah, thanks for coming on. Any, cool. Anything you'd like to plug? How can people find you? How can people learn more about yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. For now, musmatch.com. Download the app. It's completely free on the app stores. Uh, You're on Twitter uh, now, personally? Uh, I am on Twitter. Shazadunus underscore. Had to put an underscore. How, how, how do you feel about people just getting in touch with you? Right uh, now? I always, yeah, welcome it. So if you've got, like, let's say you you wanted to start a business, you want advice on anything, I l genuinely welcome people to just just reach out i always okay. like when i was starting up i struggled to find a mentor or someone to actually talk to who would actually there's a lot of people who talk but there's a few people who actually been there and done that mm. and i really struggled so um i try and do my best to i guess share any advice or knowledge or whatever i can to help other people get through it so if i can help reach out happy to. amazing thanks for coming on yeah well, uh, fantastic yes thank you <laughs> wicked great yeah that's fun wicked love it